Hello and welcome to this exploring session and don't be afraid but yes most of my hair has has disappeared magically since last time. Do not worry your host is not Nosferatu or is it? Um, today we are looking at the tragical history of Dr Faustus. We're looking at the A text, the quarter of 1604 by Christopher Marlowe and uh, others probably, um, which is something we can discuss later, perhaps if we're feeling in the mood. Uh, it's not a desperately long uh, play, the A version of the text, uh, and we're going to be able to get through uh, this in about one and a half sessions. And to do that, we have this wonderful team of people who are going to be reading through the text to find out how it functions, what it does, and why it's doing it. So in no particular order, oh no, let's go, let's go in a different order today. Uh, reading today, Faustus is... Liza Graham, actor, singer, uh, and uh, probably not a satanic minion in London. And uh, performing today the role of Mephistopheles is... Sarah Blake. I'm an actor, writer, and director living in Germany, and I might well be uh, a minion of hell. Who knows? And performing uh, a good angel, Sloth and Vintner today is... Hi, my name's Elizabeth, I'm a Sue, and I'm a person living in Romford. And reading The Evil Angel and Wrath today will be... Another satanic emanation, Alan Scott from Suffolk. <laughs> Performing Wagner Lectury and Emperor today will be... Oh, uh, me, uh, Aliki Chapel. I'm a Greek actor, translator, and theatre maker based in the north of England. Uh, performing uh, Chorus, Gluttony, and the Pope will be... Hi, I'm Victoria. I'm an actor based in London. Uh, performing Valdez, Envy, and Night will be... Hello, I'm Dan. I'm an actor based in Montpellier, France. Uh, Cornelius, Covetousness, and Robin will be... Hi, I'm Tamara. I'm an actor and many other things. I'm not sure if Minion of Hell is part of it. I'm currently in exile in Germany, usually in London. And uh, performing uh, Clown, First Friar and Robin today is... Um, Steve Longstaff, Scholar of Early Modern Drama based in Lancaster in the UK. And reading First Scholar and Pride is... Hello, I'm Helen Good. I'm a historian and I'm in London. And reading second scholar Lucifer and Cardinal is... Hi, I'm Pamela. I'm an actor based in London and definitely not coming to you from hell. And I uh, say so I'm your host Robert Crichton and uh, uh, I'm uh, here to try and keep general order, keep things moving forward and, uh, and generally uh, field uh, questions and thoughts and make sure that they all go in the right general direction. So without further ado, we will open with uh, a prologic chorus number not marching now in fields of thrasymene where mars did meet the carthaginians nor sporting in the dalliance of love in courts of kings where state is overturned nor in the pomp of proud audacious deeds intends our muse to vaunt her heavenly verse only this gentlemen we must perform the form of foster's fortunes good or bad to patient judgments we appeal our plaud and speak for Faustus in his infancy. Now is he born, his parents' base of stock, in Germany within a town called Rhodes. Of riper years to Württemberg he went, whereas his kinsmen chiefly brought him up. So soon he profits in divinity, the fruitful plot of scholarism graced, that shortly he was graced with doctor's name, excelling all whose sweet delight disputes in heavenly matters of theology till swollen with cunning of a self-conceit. His waxen wings did mount above his reach. And melting, heavens conspired his overthrow. For falling to a devilish exercise and glutted now with learning's golden gifts, he surfeits upon cursed necromancy. Nothing so sweet as magic is to him, which he prefers before his chiefest bliss and this, the man that in his study sits. And the chorus enters, Faustus discovered in his study. 
Settle thy studies, Faustus, and begin to sound the depth of that thou wilt profess. Having commenced, be a divine in show, yet level at the end of every art, and live and die in Aristotle's works. Sweet analytics, tis thou hast ravished me. Bene dicere est finis logices. Is to dispute well logic's chiefest end? Affords this art no greater miracle? Then read no more. Thou hast attained that end. A greater subject fit of Faustus' wit. Uh, bid economy for farewell. And Galen comes, seer, seeing ubi desinit philosophus ubi incipit medicus. Be a physician, Faustus, heap up gold and be eternized for some wondrous cure. Summum bonum medicinae sanitas. The end of physic is our body's health. Why, Faustus, hast thou not attained that end? Is not thy common talk found aphorisms? Are not thy bills hung up as monuments whereby whole cities have escaped the plague and thousand de desperate maladies been eased? Yet art thou still but Faustus and a man. Couldst thou make men to live eternally or being dead raise them to life again, then this profession were to be esteemed physic. Farewell. Where's Justinian? Si una ead edemque res legatur duobus alter rem alter verlorem rei, etc., etc. A petty case of paltry legacies. Ex hereditary filium non potest pater, nisi. <sighs> Such is the subject of the institute and universal body of the law. This study fits a mercenary drudge who aims at nothing but external trash. Too servile and illiberal for me. When all is done, divinity is best. Jerome's Bible, Faustus, view it well. Stipendium peccati, mors est. Stipendium peccati, the reward of sin is death. That's hard. Si peccasse negamus, falimur et nulla est in nobis veritas. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and there is no truth in us. Why then, belike, we must sin, and so consequently die? Aye, we must die an everlasting death. What doctrine call you this? Que sera, sera, what will be, shall be? Divinity adieu. These metaphysics of magicians and necromantic books are heavenly. Lines, circles, scenes, letters, and characters, I these are those that Faustus most desires. Oh, what a world of profit and delight, of power, of honor, of omnipotence is promised to the studious artisan. All things that move between the quiet poles shall be at my command. Emperors and kings are but obeyed in their several provinces, nor can they raise the wind or rend the clouds. But his dominion that exceeds in this stretcheth as far as doth the mind of man. A sound magician is a mighty god. Here, Faustus, tire thy brains to get a deity. And enter Wagner. Wagner! Commend me to my dearest friends, the German Valdez and Cornelius. Request them earnestly to visit me. I will, sir. Their conference will be a greater help to me than all my labors plod I ne'er so fast. And enter good angel and evil angel. Faustus, lay that damned book aside and gaze not on it. Let it tempt thy soul and heap God's heavy wrath upon my head. Read, read the scriptures, that is blasphemy. Go forward, Faustus, in that famous art, wherein all nature's treasure is contained. Be thou on earth as Jove is in the sky, lord and commander of these elements. And exit the angels. How I am glutted with conceit of this. Shall I make spirits fetch me what I please? Resolve me of all ambiguities, perform what desperate enterprise I will. 
I'll have them fly to India for gold, ransack the ocean for orient pearl, and seek all corners of the newfound world for pleasant fruits and princely delicates. I'll have them read me strange philosophy and tell the secrets of all foreign kings. I'll have them wall all Germany with brass and make swift Rhine circle fair Württemberg. I'll have them fill the public schools with silk, wherewith the students shall be bravely clad. I'll levy soldiers with the coin they bring and chase the Prince of Parma from our land and reign sole king of all the provinces. Yea, stranger engines for the brunt of war than was the fiery keel at Antwerp's bridge. I'll make my servile spirits to invent. Enter Valdes and Cornelius. Come, German Valdes and Cornelius, and make me blessed with your strange conference. Valdes, sweet Valdes and Cornelius, know that your words have won me at the last to practice magic, concealed arts. Yet not your words only, but mine own fantasy that will receive no object, for my head but ruminates on necromantic skill. Philosophy is odious and obscure. Both law and physic are for petty wits. Divinity is basest of the three. It's unpleasant, harsh, contemptible, and vile. Tis magic, magic, that hath ravished me. Then, then, gentle friends, aid me in this attempt. And I that have with concise syllogisms graveled the pastors of the German church and made the flowering pride of Württemberg swarm to my problems as the infernal spirits on sweet Musaeus when he came to hell will, will be as cunning as Agrippa was, whose shadow made all Europe honor him. Faustus, these books, thy wit, and our experience shall make all nations to canonize us. As Indian Moors obey their Spanish lords, so shall the spirits of every element be always serviceable to us three. Like lions shall they guard us when we please, like Almain rotters with their horsemen's staves, or Lapland giants trotting by our side, sometimes like women or unwedded maids, shadowing more beauty in their airy brows than have the white beasts of the Queen of Love. From Venice shall they drag huge argosies, and from America, the golden fleece, that yearly stuffs old Philip's treasury, if learned Faustus will be resolute. Valdez, as resolute am I in this as thou to live, therefore object it not. The miracles that magic will perform will make thee vow to study nothing else. He that is grounded in astrology, enriched with tongues well seen in minerals, hath all the principles magic doth require. Then doubt not, Faustus, but to be renowned renowned, and more frequented for this mystery than he to for the Delphian oracle. The spirits tell me they can dry the sea and fetch the treasure of all foreign wrecks. I all the wealth that our forefathers hid within the massy entrails of the earth. Then tell me, Faustus, what shall we three want? Nothing, Cornelius. Oh, this cheers my soul. Come, Show me some demonstrations magical that I may conjure in some lusty grove and have these joys in full possession. Then haste thee to some solitary grove and bear wise Bacon's and Albertus's works, the Hebrew Psalter and New Testament. And whatsoever else is requisite, we will inform thee ere our conference cease. Valdus, first let him know the words of art and then all other ceremonies learned. Faustus may try his cunning by himself. First, I'll instruct thee in the rudiments, and then wilt thou be perfecter than I. Then come and dine with me, and after meat we'll canvas every quiddity thereof. For ere I sleep, I'll try what I can do. This night I'll conjure, though I die therefore. And they exit. We're going straight into the next scene. Enter two scholars. I wonder what's become of Faustus that was wont to make our schools ring with sick probo. That shall we know, for see, here comes his boy. Enter now, sir, now, Sarah, where's the master? God in heaven knows. Why, dost not thou know? Sorry. I did something to unmute myself and it scrambled the script. Ah. Can we 
Can we take the top again? I'm sorry. Yes. Okay. So um, uh, uh, from Enter Wagner, is that good? Yeah. Uh, first scholar, how now? How now, Sarah? Where's thy master? God in heaven knows. Why? Dost not thou know? Yes, I know, but that follows not. Oh, go to, Sarah, leave your jesting and tell us where he is. That follows not necessary by force of argument that you, being licentiates, should stand upon. Therefore, acknowledge your error and be attentive. Why? Didst thou not say thou knewest? Have you any witness on it? Yes, Sarah, I heard you. Ask my fellow if I be a thief. Well, you will not tell us. Yes, sir, I will tell you. Yet if you were not dunces, you would never ask me such a question. For is not he corpus naturale, and is not that mobile? And therefore, wherefore should you ask me such a question? But that I am by nature phlegmatic, slow to wrath, and prone to lechery, uh, to love, I would say, if it were, it were not for you to come within 40 foot of the place of execution, though I do not doubt to see you both hanged to the next sessions, thus having triumphed over you, I will set my countenance like a precision and begin to speak thus. <clears throat> Truly, my dear brethren, my master is within at dinner with Valdez and Cornelius as uh, this wine, if it could speak, would inform your worships. And so the Lord bless you, preserve you, and keep you, my dear brethren, my dear brethren. And exit Wagner. Nay then, I fear he has fallen into that damned art for which they too are infamous throughout the world. Were he a stranger and not allied to me, yet should I grieve for him. But come. Let us go and inform the rector, and see if he, by his grave counsel, can reclaim him. Oh, but I fear me nothing can reclaim him. Yet let us try what we can do. And we'll just pause there at the end of that second uh, full scene. Uh, so we've uh, gone from a very nice conventional, uh, you know, here is the plot, here is, uh, here is the, uh, the life of Faustus up until the point of the story, Enter Faustus, who does this this wonderfully conversational uh, conversation with uh, himself and the audience and his books. Um, we get angels straight off. We get uh, random random uh, additional uh, uh, friends uh, on one side. We get scholars on another. Uh, we have uh, uh, we have the most wonderfully sarcastic servant. <laughs> um, <laughs> What do you think I'm carrying this for? What, come on, <laughs> infer, infer. Uh, uh, well, I forgot to introduce someone uh, before we uh, uh, started who's uh, joined the session, uh, Alexandra, who's uh, uh, in, in, uh, in the, set of the room today, uh, without uh, not reading today. Uh, any first thoughts from you about where we are? I just really love it as an opening. Um, I think, as you say, you know, that, that beginning for Faustus establishes him as a character and as someone that we, we're interested in, um, you know, easily and without having uh, a lot of narration, I guess, but rather through his own character uh, perspective on life in general and philosophy and everything. So yeah, I'm loving it. It's great. And the supernatural is already here. So, you know, in the first scene. So that tells you everything you need to know about the play. Because <laughs> in a sense, Faustus isn't alone on stage at the beginning. Because, you know, he's, yes, he's got the audience who he can be talking to, but he's actually, he's having a conversation with his props. Uh, and, you know, it gives the actor so much to do, uh, you know, and depending on the size of the book, you decide on the size of the books, uh, you know, and, and, and the, how he behaves to them uh, and the, all those thoughts. Um, um yeah so uh, other... sorry, sorry go i was gonna say also it's an internal conflict you know it isn't hi i'm faust this and i believe this it's uh, do i want it uh, i'm not sure about that yeah, no no yeah no and again that's something that we can immediately get behind and be interested in mm. uh tomorrow yeah i i just um i thought the same exact thing that the um it's a long speech and there are long speeches already but they don't feel 
particularly like long speeches, like in other plays we've done, it's it's much more uh, attention grabbing. It's it's much more there's actions in the text itself. So it's giving you almost instructions on what you as an actor should be doing to keep people's attention. Mm. Uh, Alan. Yeah, I was just thinking the um, comic, your slightly comic servant, that's almost a direct copy of what we did in the play last week, isn't it? Um, uh. A servant going up against two scholars and basically, you know, it's street cunning against learned cunning. Yeah, it's a question of chicken and egg here. Uh, which came first? The, they, they fall very, very on top of each other. So it might be uh, that one comes first, and but then the, the, they might adjusting in conversation that as they go on, there's there's an extend even more of a conversation as one next from one and one next from the other. So that the, there's a lot in that. Uh, but whether one's a direct, I don't know. Uh, Helen, I, I I was going to refer back to to the idea that the the uh, people going to this play in the previous week would have seen um, Bacon himself doing his thing with either of the the, the Bacon plays, and this would this this actually changes the way you look at um, how effective and how uh, legitimate conjuring is. I think Stephen brought this uh, brought this up when we were talking about fry bacon uh, the other day, uh, the other week. Or, uh, or additional thoughts, Stephen. Uh, well, just to say that, that bacon is actually name checked too. Mm. Mm. So, mm. Uh, are the thoughts before we move forward, Liza Faustus Faustus mm. himself? Well, uh, I. I studied this play at undergrad um, with, uh, with with a tutor, um, people who read him know him as A.D. Nuttall, we all knew him as Tony Nuttall, um, who made an extensive study about Faustus uh, in one of his books, Literature and the Problem of Evil, and distilled his big question about this play is, is Faustus damned because he sins, or does he sin because he is damned in advance? Um, uh, so just little things to flag up in the chorus, uh, for example, how the chorus sets up Faustus, um, till swollen with cunning of a self-conceit, his waxen wings did mount above his reach and melting heavens conspired his overthrow. So is he to blame for soaring on waxen wings like Icarus or, or did, or did heaven who moves all things make him do that? Um, this is a question to contemplate as we go on, and it's not one for which I have an immediate answer, but it's a fun one to think about. Mm. I quite like also the, the, the question with the, the two scholars, um, you know, when they're talking about, you know, the, what's become of Faustus. We, obviously, we've had the, the angels sort of pushing him back and forth, going, you know, go, go for it, don't go for it, which I think every single animated cartoon uh, of the 20th century has slightly destroyed for us as, as a scene. Um, but when you know the, the 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 scholars sort of coming in, going, well, we know what's going on over there. Uh, but the, just they characterise him in that first line of just being possibly an insufferable smartass. Um, you know, it's, uh, it was wont to make our schools ring with sick sick probo, which uh, you know uh, I prove it thus. I, I know the answer. I know the answer. QED um, bitches. <laughs> and so you know, there's there's uh, it's it's actually quite an interesting little scene about you know what is their relationship precisely with him as well, and you know are they proud of that or are they actually a bit annoyed and you know is he a bit too flash? I, I uh, Aliki, uh, last thought before we move forward. Very quickly, as far as we know, is that the first appearance of that device with the good angel and the bad angel? Um, well, we've park it for later. It's yeah, it's a bit. Tri I I think of both at the same time, possibly. Um, having counsel by a demonic figure, I think we've probably got precedence. Uh, but yeah, it's a really like, good question. 
a war between vice and virtue for the human soul. We've seen a lot of that in morality plays, but I don't know if we've seen it expressly done in this way. Yeah, I, I don't think, I've, yeah, it's more a, a massive battle occurs <laughs> rather yeah. than uh, two people sort of uh, leap up. So it's yeah. a good question. Um, really love that. Captain Haddock, you know? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, we move into a uh, little bit of time has passed. Faustus has uh, done all this prep work. Um, and, uh, you know, because he, you know, he does that. And uh, so enter Faustus to conjure. Now that the gloomy shadow of the earth, longing to view Orion's drizzling look, leaps from the Antarctic world into the sky and dims the welkin with her pitchy breath, Faustus, begin thy incantations, and try if devils will obey thy hest, seeing thou hast prayed and sacrificed to them. Within this circle is Jehovah's name, forward and backward anagrammatized, the abbreviated names of holy saints, figures of every adjunct to the heavens, and characters of signs and erring stars by which the spirits are enforced to rise, then fear not Faustus, but be resolute and try the utmost magic can perform. Sint mihi dei acherontis propiti, vale et numen triplex Jehovoi, ignei, aere, aquatani spiritus salvete, orientis princeps Beelzebub, Inferni audentis monarcha et demogorgon propitiamus vos, ut appareat et surgat Mephistopheles, quod tumerares, per Jehoam Gehenam, et consecratam aquam quad nunc spargo, signumque crucis quod nunc fatio, et per vota nostra ipse nunc surgat nobis dicatus Mephistopheles! And enter Mephistopheles. I charge thee to return and change thy shape. Thou art too ugly to attend on me. Go and return an old Franciscan friar. That holy shape becomes a devil best. Exit Mephistopheles, probably a bit hurt, frankly. Huh, I see there's virtue in my heavenly words. Who would not be proficient in this art? How pliant is this Mephistopheles, full of obedience and humility. Such is the force of magic and my spells. Now, now, Faustus, thou art conjurer laureate that can command great Mephistopheles. Queen Regis Mephistopheles fratris imagine. And Mephistopheles reappears dressed like a Franciscan friar. Now, Faustus, what wouldst thou have me do? I charge thee, wait upon me whilst I live to do whatever Faustus shall command, be it to make the moon drop from her sphere or ocean to overwhelm the world. I am the servant to great Lucifer and may not follow thee without his leave. No more than he commands must we perform. Did not he charge thee to appear to me? No, I came hither of mine own accord. Did not my conjuring speeches raise thee? Speak. That was the cause, but yet per accident. For when we hear one rack the name of God, adjure the spirits and his saviour Christ, we fly in hope to get his glorious soul. Nor will we come unless he use such means whereby he is in danger to be damned. Therefore the shortest cut for conjuring is stoutly to abjure the Trinity, and pray devoutly to the Prince of Hell. So Faustus hath already done, and holds this principle. There is no chief, but only Beelzebub, to whom Faustus doth dedicate himself. This word damnation terrifies not him, for he confounds Hell in Elysium. His ghost be with the old philosophers. But uh, leaving these vain trifles of men's souls, tell me, what is that Lucifer thy Lord? Arch-regent and commander of all spirits. Was not that Lucifer an angel once? Yes, Faustus, and most dearly loved of God. How comes it then that he is prince of devils? Oh, by aspiring pride and insolence, 
but which God threw him from the face of heaven. And what are you that live with Lucifer? Unhappy spirits that fell with Lucifer, conspired against our God with Lucifer, and are forever damned with Lucifer. Where are you damned? In hell. How comes it then that thou art out of hell? <laughs> Why, this is hell, nor am I out of it. Thinkst thou that I, who saw the face of God and tasted the eternal joys of heaven, am not tormented with ten thousand hells in being deprived of everlasting bliss? O oh, Fausto. These frivolous demands which strike a terror to my fainting soul. What? Is great Mephistopheles so passionate for being deprived of the joys of heaven? Learn thou of Faustus' manly fortitude and scorn those joys thou never shalt possess. Go, bear these tidings to great Lucifer. Seeing Faustus hath incurred eternal death for, by desperate thoughts against Jove's deity, say he surrenders up to him his soul. So he will spare him four and twenty years, letting him live in all voluptuousness, having thee ever to attend on me, to give me whatsoever I shall ask, to tell me whatsoever I demand, to slay mine enemies and aid my friends and always be obedient to my will. Go and return to mighty Lucifer and meet me in my study at midnight and then resolve me of thy master's mind. I will. Faustus. Exit Mephistopheles. Ah, oh, had I as many souls as there be stars, I'd give them all for Mephistopheles. By him, I'll be great emperor of the world and make a bridge thorough the moving air to pass the ocean with a band of men. I'll join the hills that bind the Afric shore and make that country continent to Spain and both contributory to my crown. The emperor shall not live but by my leave, nor any potentate of Germany. Now that I have obtained what I desired, I'll live in speculation of this art till Mephistopheles return again. And exit Faustus. We go straight into the following scene. Enter Wagner and Clown. Sir, our boy, come hither. Boy, Swiftman's boy, I hope you've not seen many boys with such picky divants as I have. Boy, quotha. Tell me, sirrah, hast thou any comings in? Aye, and goings out too. You may see else. Alas, poor slave. See how poverty jesteth in his nakedness. <laughs> <laughs> the villain is bare and out of service, and so hungry that I know he would give his soul to the devil for a shoulder of mutton, though it were blood raw. <laughs> How, my soul to the devil for a shoulder of mutton, so to a blood raw? Not so, good friend. My lady, I need have it well roasted and good sauce to it if I pay so dear. <laughs> <laughs> well, wilt thou serve me, and I'll make thee go like Queen Mihi Discipulus. Now in verse. No, sirrah, in beaten silk and staves acre. Now, knaves acre? Well, I thought that was all the land his father left him. Do you hear? I'll be sorry to rob you of your living. Sirrah, I say in staves acre. Oh, staves acre. Uh, why then, be like, if I were your man, I should be full of vermin. Hmm. So thou shalt, whether thou beest with me or no. <laughs> but sir, I'll leave your jesting and bind yourself presently unto me for seven years, or I'll turn all the lice about thee into familiars, and they shall tear thee in pieces. <laughs> you may say, you may say that labour, they're too familiar with me already. Swoons are as bold of my flesh as if they paid for their meat and drink. <laughs> well, you're here, sirrah. Hold. Take these gilders. You read it, Irons. What be they? Why, French crowns. It, a mass, but for the name of French crowns, a man were as good as have as many English counters. Uh, what shall I do with these? Why now, sirrah, thou art at an hour's warning, whensoever or wheresoever the devil shall fetch thee. Yeah, take your grid irons here again. 
truly are none of them. Uh, truly, but you shall. Bear witness, I gave them him. Bear witness, I give them you again. What? I will cause two devils presently to fetch thee away, Balliol and Belcher. Balliol and Belcher? Let your Balian and Belcher come here, I'll knock them. They were never so knocked since they were devils. Say, I should kill one of them, what would folks say? Do you see yonder tall fellow in the round slot? He's killed the devil. So I should be called Kill Devil all the parish over. Enter two devils, and the clown runs up and down, crying. Balliol and Belcher, spirits away. Exuant devils. Are they gone? Vengeance on them. They have vile long nails. There was a he devil and a she devil. I'll tell you how you should know them. All the he devils has horns, and all the she devils has cliffs and cloven feet. <clears throat> well, sir, I follow me. Dear, if I should serve you, will you teach me to raise up Bonio and Belchio? I will teach thee to turn thyself to anything, to a dog or a cat or a mouse or a rat or anything. How? A Christian fellow to a dog or a cat, a mouse or a rat? <laughs> no, sir. If you turn me into anything, let it be in the likeness of a pretty little frisking flea, that I may be here and there and everywhere. I'll um, tickle the pretty wench's plackets. I'll be among them, with faith. Well, so I'll come. Hey, now, do you hear, Wagner? How? Balliol and Belcher? No, oh, oh, oh. oh. I pray, sir, let Bodio and Belcher go sleep. Villain, call me Master Wagner, and let thy left eye be diametrically fixed upon my right heel with quasi vestigious nostris in sitstere. And he exits. Oh, God forgive me, he speaks Dutch Faustian. Well, I'll follow him. I'll serve him. That's flat. And we'll pause there. Um, lots of things with the clown there uh, that we've seen elsewhere. Uh, deliberate comic mishearing of, of words and phrases. Uh, interesting status play. Play with the audience as well. Bear witness I gave them him. Uh, really interesting things. Some, some quite moderately obscene uh, puns. Or, or, always, uh, always nice to uh, see that uh, she devils um uh described in such a fashion um and his his desire to um to be a flea to uh tickle the pretty wench's plackets i we've had a similar line to that before um in a in, in another place uh, obviously that's the comedy uh, scene following on from the terribly serious uh scene faustus conjuring up mephistopheles um appearing like a franciscan friar which is always nice um, I'm immediately reminded of Bale's uh, portrayal of, uh, of uh, Satan as a Franciscan friar. We have that uh, portrayal quite a few times, especially in Bale, actually. I think we might be doing a bit of that again this evening with, um, in King John. Um, so, um, and, so that appears elsewhere as well. Um, it, it, it's really interesting how coolly Mephistopheles seems to be playing most of this, you know, it's uh, yeah, no, it's, it's no, no big deal. Signing salt. Yeah. I do it all the time. You know, it's just, just, just a thing. Um, until Faustus um, talks about hell and then Mephistopheles gets quite cross. Um, always find that fascinating thoughts in the room about any of those two scenes. Le uh, Leaky. Well, it's interesting to see them as mirrors of each other, you know, servitude, sworn, and so on. Um, but also, I'm interested in kind of how much more cheaply Faustus sells his soul, in a way, than the clown does. You know, the clown has opinions about how much the soul ought to cost. Faustus is just like 24 years, yeah, it's fine. And, and world domination. But he could have had 200 years, surely. Yeah, it's, it's his opening bid as yeah. well you know it's like Mephistopheles go I'm not going to bother haggling I mean he's <laughs> he's he's haggled himself down why, why would I bother yeah um, uh Stephen um uh, well just just on that I mean I, I remember reading something years ago where somebody said well yeah but in, a, in a plague ridden world 25 years isn't isn't that you know bad a deal um but the, but the comment I wanted to make 
was was to do with sort of again Aliki's point about the contrast, but in performance terms, um, souls and minds versus bodies. That the second scene is is all about bodies, isn't it? It's all about the sort of lower the material stratum, you know the the thing that we're actually, you know, they all sort of meet prison, as it were. And I think that, you know, in performance terms, that might be quite an interesting um, division between the way that, the way that people are kind of carrying and rooting themselves. Mm. Yes, uh, the clown is uh, very much, uh, you know, uh, the question of fleas on his body and uh, and and what they're going to, you know, turn into, and uh, and and the physical business of the devils being treated quite differently um as well you know we have this uh, this this arrival of 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 devils uh other thoughts Liza? i thought i saw a hand oh yeah um but i forgot what i was going to say so carry on uh, anybody else want to leap in thoughts alexandra uh you're muted yes <laughs> sorry realized that um i was just going to point out the the innovativeness of humanizing the devil the devil that we see, at least, you know, the, the fact that, that Mephistopheles is not just a flat representation of evilness in general, but actually has a character and has things he feels and motivations and such, um, was new. Obviously, we take it for granted because everything else, everything thereafter has, has mm -hmm. aped that. Um, but yes, there's something, there's something really wonderful about that. Um, and I also wanted to uh, follow up on something that somebody else was saying about um, the contrast between the two scenes where we look at, you know, Faustus conjuring and, at, at, you know, um, Wagner's kind of uh, alleged ability to, to use the same books and the same magic. Um, it kind of negates the thing that happens a little earlier where um, Valdez and Cornelius say to Faustus, so, you know, we can... As long as you know this, that, and the other, um, you know, as long as you are a, a very, a very well-educated person, you can control this magic. And then we see that, you know, a much lower character can do so as well. So the point is, anybody can deal with with devils. You don't have to be uh, super clever or, or really well-read. Um, anyone can have that power in a way, and obviously abuse it which is what they and, and all of them that we, everyone that we've seen so far attempt or, or be in touch with with those powers we also immediately see that the temptation to to be corrupted by it by them mm. it's interesting because we had very similar stuff in in, in fry bacon as well I, I will push back slightly on the personification of mephistopheles we have had a range of demonic encounters uh before that are, have had more of a psychological bent as well. Um, they're not uh, all necessarily um, uh, the, the sort of medieval mindset. We have had a few others. So I, 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 I think this is the most fully realized, um, but, uh, but there, are, there are precedents, uh, I think uh, it's fair to say, uh, though others may disagree uh, who were in some of those plays. Um, other thoughts um, before we move forward, Aliki? Just very quickly, Wagner is speaking Latin, which isn't all that normal. He's fairly learned. Mm. Again, it's that, that question of how much learning is the sidekick uh, to the magician getting. Um, again, following, following that question with Bacon as well, where the, uh, okay, it's more explicitly a poor scholar set up, um, but the, there's that question of transition of learning. How hard is it to do magic, um, which uh, has, has already been brought up. So uh, yes, Alan. Yeah, I was just wondering whether um, how kosher the Latin is in each case. Um, I don't off the top of my head know. Uh, anyone in the room uh, know? I, I, I know sort of how that, that big Faustus uh, conjuring Mephistopheles speaks sort of works, uh, just to the way it beats. Um, there's almost a mid point when he first calls, says Mephistopheles and almost like, Nope, nothing happened. And on we go again. Uh, quality to it. Um, I've found in performance before. Um, it's not a speech that just goes, keeps going, building up. Um, it sort of stops and starts. Uh, anyone in the room know their, know their onions on that? No, fair enough. Uh, Helen? Well, I mean, I, I didn't strike me that he was, it wasn't decent Latin. Mm. Um, you know, I mean, it, it, it's 
didn't seem jumbled or, or, or corrupt. Mm. I, I mean, I, th I think the Faustus's Latin worked for me. I was just wondering with Wagner's. Well, it looks maybe okay. a bit of, um, mm. you know, dog Latin there in, in, the, in part. Uh, one, one, one for follow-up, I think. Liza, I saw a hand. Yeah, but just that um, Marlo, Marlo is an Oxford man, and I think the dynamic he would be used to uh, would be one of scholars and sizers. So um, to, have, to have Wagner a servant who's also a student, he's just a student who's poor and has to work to pay his way. Um, and, and what he's... And... Uh, I, I don't know about Wagner's Latin. My own Latin isn't good enough. Um, but Marlowe's Latin, uh, he's often explicitly quoting from a source. Uh, and where he's not, um, generally people seem to think the structure is pretty good if of its time. Uh, but I'm going to leave that to wiser heads than my own. Was he a Cambridge man rather than Oxford? I oh, it was Cambridge. Yeah, you're, you're totally right. Well, it matters. Uh, <laughs> well, it matters, you know. <laughs> Any, to, anyway. to this forum, doesn't matter. Um, any fi final thoughts before we move on to our next pairing? Um, okay, let's rattle forward then. So, Clown has exited um, uh, serving, serving uh, uh, Wagner, and Faustus is discovered in his study again. Now, Faustus, must thou needs be damned? And canst, thou, and canst thou not be saved? What boots it then to think of God or heaven? Away with such vain fancies and despair. Despair in God and trust in Beelzebub. Now go not backward. No, Faustus, be resolute. Why waverest thou? Oh, something soundeth in mine ears. Abjure this magic, turn to God again. I and Faustus will turn to God again. <sighs> to God? He loves thee not. The God thou servest is thine own appetite, wherein is fixed the love of Beelzebub. To him I'll build an altar and a church, and offer lukewarm blood of newborn babes. Enter good and evil angel. Speak, Faustus, leave that acceptable heart. Contrition, prayer, repentance, what of them? Oh, they are means to bring me unto heaven. Rather illusions, fruits of lunacy, that make men foolish that do trust them most. Speak, Faustus, think of heaven and heavenly things. No, Faustus, think of honour and of wealth. Exit angels. Of wealth? Why, the signory of Emden shall be mine, when Mephistopheles shall stand by me. What god can hurt thee, Faustus? Thou art safe. Cast no more doubts. Come, Mephistopheles, and bring tidings from great Lucifer. It's not midnight. Come, Mephistopheles. Weni, weni, Mephistophele. Enter Mephistopheles. Now tell me, what says Lucifer thy lord? That I shall wait on Faustus whilst he lives, so he will buy my service with his soul. Already Faustus hath hazarded that for thee. But Faustus, thou must bequeath it solemnly, and write a deed of gift with thine own blood, for that security craves great Lucifer. If thou deny it, I will back to hell. Stay, Mephistopheles, and... Uh, tell me, what good will my soul do thy lord? Enlarge his kingdom. Is that the reason why he tempts us thus? Solomon miseris socio sabuise flores. Why, have you any pain that torture others? As great as have the human souls of men. But tell me, Faustus, shall I have thy soul? And I will be thy slave and wait on thee and give thee more than thou hast wit to us. I, Mephistopheles, I give it thee. Then, Faustus, stab thine arm courageously and bind thy soul, that at some certain day great Lucifer may claim it as his own. 
and then be thou as great as Lucifer. Lo, Mephistopheles, for love of thee I cut mine arm, and with my proper blood assure my soul to be great Lucifer's, chief lord and regent of perpetual night. View here the blood that trickles from mine arm, and let it be propitious for my wish. But Faustus, thou must write it in manner of a deed of gift. Ah, so I will. But Mephistopheles, my blood congeals, and I can write no more. I'll fetch thee fire to dissolve it straight. What might the, say the staying of my blood portend? Is it unwilling I should write this bill? Why streams it not that I might write afresh? Faustus gives to thee his so Ah, there it stayed. Why shouldst thou not? Is not thy soul thine own? Then write again, Faustus gives to thee his soul. And re-enter Mephistopheles with a chafer of coal. Here's fire. Come, Faustus, set it on. So, now the blood begins to clear again. Now will I make an end immediately? <sighs> what will not I do to obtain his soul? Consumatum est. This bill is ended. And Faustus hath bequeathed his soul to Lucifer. But what is this inscription on mine arm? Homo fuge. Whither should I fly? If unto God he'll throw me down to hell. My senses are deceived. Here's nothing writ. Homo fuge. Yet shall not Faustus fly. I'll fetch him somewhat to delight his mind. Uh, exit Mephistopheles, he re-enters with devils who gives crowns and rich apparel to Faustus. They dance and then depart. Speak, Mephistopheles, what means this show? Nothing, Faustus, but to delight thy mind withal, and to show thee what magic can perform. But may I raise up spirits when I please? Aye, Faustus, and do greater things than these. Then there's enough for a thousand souls. Here, Mephistopheles, receive this scroll, a deed of gift of body and of soul. But yet conditionally that thou perform all articles prescribed between us both. Faustus, I swear by hell and Lucifer to effect all promises between us made. Then, hear me read them. On these conditions following, first, that Faustus may be a spirit in form and substance. Secondly, that Mephistopheles shall be his servant and at his command. Thirdly, that Mephistopheles shall do for him and bring him whatever he desires. Fourthly, that he shall be in his chamber or house invisible. Lastly, that he shall appear to the said John Faustus at all times in what form or shape soever he please. I, John Faustus of Württemberg, doctor, by these presents do give both body and soul to Lucifer, Prince of the East, and his minister, Mephistopheles. And furthermore grant unto them that twenty-four years being expired, the articles above, written in violet, full power to fetch or carry the said John Faustus, body and soul, flesh, blood, or goods, into their habitation, wheresoever. By me, John Faustus. Speak, Faustus. Do you deliver this as your deed? I take it, and the devil give thee good on it. <sighs> now, Faustus, ask what thou wilt. First, will I question with thee about hell? Tell me, where is the place that men call hell? Under the heavens. Aye, but whereabout? Within the bowels of these elements, where we are tortured and remain forever. Hell hath no limits, nor is circumscribed in one self place. For where we are is hell. And where hell is, there must we ever be. And to conclude, when all the world dissolves and every creature shall be purified, all places shall be hell, but are not heaven. Come, I think hell's a fable. Aye, think so still. 
shall experience change thy mind. Why, thinkst thou then that Faustus shall be damned? Nay, nah, of necessity. For here's the scroll wherein thou hast given thy soul to Lucifer. Ay, and body too, but what of that? Thinkst thou that Faustus is so fond to imagine that after this life there is any pain? <laughs> Tush, these are trifles and mere old wives' tales. But Faustus, I am an instance to prove the contrary, for I am damned, and am now in hell. How? Now in hell? Nay, and this be hell, I'll willingly be damned here. What? Walking, disputing, etc., etc. Uh, but leaving off this, let me have a wife, the fairest maid in Germany, for I am wanton and lascivious and cannot live without a wife. How? A wife? I pretty Faustus, talk not of a wife. Nay, sweet Mephistopheles, fetch me one, for I shall have one. Well, thou wilt have one. Sit there till I come. I'll fetch thee a wife in the devil's name. And Mephistopheles brings on a devil dressed like a woman with fireworks. Tell me, Faustus, how dost thou like thy wife? A plague on her for a hot whore! <laughs> Faustus. Marriage is but a ceremonial toy. If thou lovest me, think no more of it. I'll cull thee out the fairest courtesans and bring them every morning to thy bed. She whom thine eyes shall like, thy heart shall have. Be she as chaste as was Penelope, as wise as Sabah, or as beautiful as was bright Lucifer before his fall. Hold, take this book. Peruse it thoroughly. The iterating of these lines brings gold. The framing of this circle on the ground brings whirlwinds, tempests, thunder, and lightning. Pronounce this thrice devotedly to thyself, and men in armor shall appear to thee ready to execute what thou desirest. Thanks, Mephistopheles. Yet, Fain would I have a book wherein I might behold all spells and incantations, that I might raise up spirits when I please. Well, here they are, in this book. Now, would I have a book where I might see all characters and planets of the heavens, that I might know their motions and dispositions? Here they are, too. Ooh. Uh, nay, let me have one book more, and then I've done wherein I might see all plants, herbs, and trees that grow upon the earth. Here they be. Well, thou art deceived. I warrant thee. And I'm just going to pause us there for various textual reasons that I'll come to in a moment. Um, yes, Faust is possibly disappointed that uh, he's been handed the Kindle edition of All Knowledge, and uh, he was hoping for a big, big library of books, and he just get no, it's, it's all in there. It's, uh, that, it's all there. And um, yeah, he's a bit of a prude, isn't he, the, the Fa uh, Faustus? You know, who he doesn't want a, a devil, uh, devil dressed like a woman uh, with fireworks. I mean, you know, I've, I've known less exciting Saturday nights out. Um, so <laughs> when, when the Globe did it, uh, the, the she devil had fireworks coming out of her hoo ha. Yeah. <laughs> What? Uh, placket, awful. placket, I think is the correct term for this play. Um, <laughs> so yeah, there, it's interesting. The Faustus's some um, sort of um, Katy Perry quality of hot and co then cold um, of uh, uh, at the very beginning of just just going oh damned not damned damned oh I don't know oh, I'll kill babies yeah I'll go I'll go all the way I'll go all the way <laughs> um, that brings the good angel scurrying in. Um, I love the fact that Mephistopheles is just so, the moment it's all signed, he's just so unhelpful. <laughs> so unhelpful. It's like, yeah, yeah you, oh, you wanted this. Yeah, well, we can't get that's not in the contract. No, computer says no. Can't, can't give it, no, that's against our, our, our in-house policy. So you can't have it. Terms and conditions. Yeah, term, haven't read the terms and conditions. Um, this is why you have to read the small print. Yeah, oh, he did. He read it out. He um, wrote the small print. <laughs> but he failed to put, put in a, a wife clause. Yeah. He really didn't think it through. I mean, I, I really would like in staging that to just uh, have the terms and conditions come up on, on a screen like you get with uh, any uh, computer, uh, you know, terms and conditions. Oh. So you just, nah, just click. <laughs> 
But, but Mephistopheles doesn't want Faustus to have a wife because marriage is a blessing, marriage mm. is a sacrament. Uh, you can't have that, but you can lead women into sin if you yeah. want to. That's allowed. You can, you can, you can have all the, 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 all the sex and all the stuff, but you can't have a sanctified uh, state of marriage. Um, and, uh, and I love, you know, Faustus asking, you know, why, why do you want us to come into hell? What's, you know, what's, the, what's in it for you? And just, we like more miserable people around us. <laughs> You know, that's that's, 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 that's that's basically it. Yeah, misery loves misery company. Loves Thank you very much. Come on in. Um, he's because uh, yeah, he sort of gives and takes. It's, it's his dismissiveness and the fact that he's not selling it. He's not turning up like a desperate salesman going, "Come on, yeah, hell's great. Come, come on." He's just going, "Yeah, it's, that's what you want." You know, it's a it is a con um, technique, and I can't remember what it's called. I think it's got a term. Other thoughts. Uh, anyone want to leap in? Anyone, anyone who hasn't spoken so far, who's uh, who so far hasn't had a vast amount to read, perhaps uh, Pamela, Vicky, any, any, any thoughts you want to, to to leap in with? Not thoughts per se. I'm just very much enjoying it. Um, yeah, don't have much to add there. <laughs> um, okay, if people then we'll we'll keep moving forward. This is this is fine. If there's 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 no more, so we go forward with the manuscript as as uh, in one case it has come to us. Uh, there is um, the option that actually there is an additional scene that goes in here from later on in the play. Um, uh, I've left it as it came to me, um, and we'll flag that scene up later. So there could be comedy scene happening here. Or um, you might want to just let the scenes run through. Faustus needs to have a sort of sudden random moment of uh, Damascene conversion by looking up at the sky to make it work. But I have seen it work this way, so I, I'm, I'm letting it run through as it's currently formatted. So um, this is either the beginning of a wholly new scene with a comedy scene between it, or you can run it straight through. Faustus, change your mind again. When I behold the heavens, then I repent and curse thee, wicked Mephistopheles, because thou hast deprived me of those joys. Why, Faustus, thinkest thou heaven is such a glorious thing? I tell thee, it is not half so fair as thou, or any man that breathes on the earth. How proves thou that? Twas made for man. Therefore is man more excellent. If it was made for man, it was made for me. I will renounce this magic and repent. Enter good angel and evil angel. Faustus, repent, yet God will pity thee. Thou art a spirit, God cannot pity thee. Who buzzeth in mine ears, I am a spirit. Be I a devil, yet God may pity me. I, God, will pity me if I repent. I, but Faustus never shall repent. Exit angels. Ah, my heart's so hardened I cannot repent. Scarce can I name salvation, faith, or heaven. But fearful echoes thunder in mine ears. Faustus, thou art damned. Then swords, knives, poisons, guns, halters, and envenomed steel are laid before me to dispatch myself. And long ere this I should have slain myself had not sweet pleasure conquered deep despair. Have I not made blind Homer sing to me of Alexander's love and Enon's death? And hath not he that built the walls of Thebes with ravishing sound of his melodious harp made music with my Mephistopheles? Why should I die then? Or basely despair? I am resolved. Faustus shall ne'er repent. Come Mephistopheles, let us dispute again and argue of divine astrology. Tell me, are there many heavens above the moon? Are all celestial bodies but one globe as is the substance of this centric earth? As are the elements, such are the spheres, mutually folded in each other's orb. And Faustus, all jointly move upon one axle tree, whose termini is termed the world's wide pole. Nor are the names of Saturn, Mars, or Jupiter faint, but our erring stars. But tell me, have they all one motion, both situ and tempore? All jointly move from east to west in 24 hours upon the poles of the world, but differ in their motion upon the poles of the zodiac. 
Touch these slender trifles Wagner can decide. Hath Mephistopheles no greater skill? Who knows not the double motion of the planets? The first is finished in a natural day, the second thus as Saturn in 30 years, Jupiter in 12, Mars in four, the sun, Venus, and Mercury in a year, the moon in 28 days. Touch, these are freshmen's suppositions. But tell me, hath every sphere a dominion or intelligentsia? I. How many heavens or spheres are there? Nine the seven planets, the firmament, and the imperial heaven. Well, resolve me in this question. Why have we not conjunctions, oppositions, aspects, eclipses, all at one time? But in some years we have more, some less. Per ino equalam motum respectu tutius. Well, I am answered. Tell me who made the world. I will not. Sweet Mephistopheles, tell me. Move me not, for I will not tell thee. Villain, have I not bound thee to tell me anything? Aye, it is not against our kingdom, but this is. Think thou on hell, Faustus, for thou art damned. Think, Faustus, upon God that made the world. Remember this. I go, accursed spirit, to ugly hell. Tis thou hast damned oppressed Faustus' soul. Is not too late? Too late. Never too late if Faustus can repent. If thou repent, devil shall tear thee in pieces. Repent, and they shall never raise thy skin. Our Christ, my Saviour, Seek to save distressed Faustus' soul. Ah, but the angel's warnings are not heeded, for here enter Lucifer, Beelzebub, and Mephistopheles. Christ cannot save thy soul, for he is just. There's none but I have interest in the same. Oh, who art thou that looks so terrible? I am Lucifer, and this is my companion prince in hell. Oh, Faustus, they are come to fetch away thy soul. We come to tell thee thou dost injure us. Thou talkst of Christ, contrary to thy promise. Thou shouldst not think of God. Think of the devil and of his dam too. Nor will I henceforth pardon me in this, and Faustus vows never to look to heaven, never to name God or, or, or pray to him, uh, to burn his scriptures, slay his ministers, and make my spirits pull his churches down. Do so, and we will highly gratify thee. Faustus, we are come from hell to show thee some pastime. Sit down, and thou shalt see all the seven deadly sins appear in their proper shapes. That sight will be as pleasing unto me as paradise was to Adam on the first day of his creation. Talk not of paradise nor creation, but mark this show. Talk of the devil and nothing else. Come away! Enter the seven deadly sins. Now, Faustus, examine them of their several names and dispositions. What art thou the first? I am pride. I disdain to have any parents. I'm like what to Ovid's flea. I can creep into every corner of a wench. Sometimes, like a periwig, I sit on her brow. Or like a fan of feathers, I kiss her lips. Indeed I do. What do I not? Fie! What a scent is here! I'll not speak another word except the ground were perfumed and covered with cloth of arras. What art thou the second? I am covetousness, begotten of an old churl in an old leathern bag. And, might I have my wish, I would desire that this house and all the people in it were turned to gold, that I might lock you up in my good chest. Oh, my sweet gold. What art thou the third? I am wroth. I had neither father nor mother. I leapt out of a lion's mouth when I was scarce half an hour old. Ever since I have run up and down the world with this case of rapiers, wounding myself when I had nobody to fight with all. I was born in hell, and look to it, 
the sum of you shall be my father. What art thou the fourth? I am envy, begotten of a chimney sweeper and an oyster wife. I cannot read, and therefore wish all books were burnt. I am lean with seeing others eat. Oh, that there would become a famine through all the world, that all might die and I live alone. Then thou shouldest see how fat I would be. But must thou sit and I stand? Come down with a vengeance. Away, envious rascal. What art thou the fifth? Who I, sir? I am gluttony. My parents are all dead, and the devil a penny they have left me, but a bare pension, and that is thirty meals a day and ten bevers. A small trifle to suffice nature. Oh, I come of a royal parentage. My grandfather was a gammon of bacon. My grandmother a hogshead of claret wine. My godfathers were these, Peter Pickle Herring and Martin Martelmas Beef. Oh, but my godmother, she was a jolly gentlewoman and well beloved in every good town and city. Her name was Mistress Marjorie Marchbeer. Now, Faustus, thou hast heard all my progeny. Wilt thou bid me to supper? Uh, no, I'll see thee hanged. Thou wilt eat up all my victuals. Then the devil choke thee. Choke thyself, glutton. What art thou the sixth? I am sloth. I was begotten on a sunny bank where I have lain ever since, and you have done me great injury to bring me from thence. Let me be carried hither again by gluttony and lechery. I will speak him in a word for a king's ransom. What are you, Mistress Minx, the seventh and last? Why, sir? I am one that loves an inch of raw mutton. Better than an L of fried stockfish, and the first letter of my name begins with Away! To hell! To hell! Exuant the sins. Now, Faustus, how dost thou like this? Oh, this feeds my soul. Faustus, in hell is all manner of delights. Oh, might I see hell and return again? Uh, how happy I were then! thou shalt, I will send for thee at midnight. In meantime, take this book, peruse it thoroughly, oh. and thou shalt turn thyself into what shape thou wilt. Great thanks, mighty Lucifer. This will I keep as cherry as my life. Farewell, Faustus, and think on the devil. Uh, farewell, great Lucifer. Uh, Come. Sorry, and exit Lucifer and Beelzebub. Come. Mephistopheles! And uh, indeed they go. And uh, yes, the seven deadly sins can be seen in Panto in Reading, uh, late, uh, in, probably, probably next year. Um, they're snow wide. <laughs> I, I don't know if they're quite big enough uh, names to play Reading. They might be more sort of Didcot level. <laughs> Western Supermare. Uh, so. <laughs> Uh, there's there's lots of really nice things uh, in, in that. Um, it's it, it's interesting uh, letting the two scenes run into each other. You know, the the sense of um, in the previous scene that you know Faust was getting increasingly frustrated with Mephistopheles and going into this repentance um, and arguing with himself with other people again. Is this the right choice? Um, and he keeps trying to get Mephistopheles to give him something and. Uh, I love the smart arsey bit moment where it goes, well, these are all stuff, they're freshman questions, these are easy. <laughs> um, uh, and then, you know, it's like Mephistopheles going, right, okay, let's call in the big boys. And, you know, Lucifer enters and it's sort of this, oh, crap moment. Uh, <laughs> how much genuine fear is there from Faustus uh, in that scene? Uh, is, is, it, is he actually delighted to see Lucifer or is he actually now slightly bricking it? Um, performance choices available tomorrow. I'm just wondering, in this um, reality dimension, uh, in this play, is Lucifer the devil or is he one of the generals? Because I feel like this one doesn't equate Satan. We, we mention him earlier on, don't we? Uh, that, that he was an angel once. I forget how he, whether he's given a title then. Mm. Mm. 
it, it, it does seem if he's not the devil, he's definitely second in, in command, I would have thought. Uh, I, you know, the I fact you've it. got silent Beelzebub, you know, just someone in a costume just going. I, I found it uh, arch regent and commander of all spirits. Mm. So, yeah, Lucifer is the the big guy. Mm. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, Be Beelzebub is obviously just uh, support. He's the backing backing singer um, uh, there. In the B uh, text, he gets lines. Yes, I think. yes, um, and that's uh, that's the, but that's a different universe, which we'll touch upon perhaps at another time. If you're very good, Alan. Yeah, I was just thinking, um, Lucifer is top dog. Um, Mephistopheles and Beelzebub are seconds in command, effectively. Mm. Just thinking the. Um, mystery play that we were working on with a view to staging just before lockdown killed it off. Um, the title of which escapes me is on the podcast, isn't it? Uh, which was the Fall of Lucifer. Yes, yes, we've got yes, we've got lots of Falls of Lucifer's. Yes, um, yes, um, and yes, we've got lots of things that are very medieval here. You know, the, the whole Seven Deadly Sins uh, being traipsed on stage with lots of uh, lots of fun. For those, they're really fun little speeches, um, really, really nicely detailed and uh, character driven. Um, I just love the idea. Slave just goes, "Yeah, carry me off. Can't be asked." It was exhausting getting on stage. Uh, any final thoughts before we move? On? There are lots of uh, other issues. Uh, uh, Leaky. Very quickly, I'm interested in the passage of time. Quite a lot of it seems to have gone by between mm. when you signed and now. Mm. Uh, which the uh, the if the clown scene lives in the middle of that sequence helps as well. So it's the sense of he's had a bit of buyer's remorse has occurred. Yeah. Um, or I suppose you could have a dumb show, some words, some music, some dancing, clowns, devils. Yeah, the, mm. the equivalent of a uh, training montage. Yeah, yeah, because we never really see what Faustus gets up to at this stage, you know, where he's just trying out these powers, and you know, and, uh, we're we're going to get to that next. Uh, but uh, so far, quite light. Stephen. Oh, you're fading in and out. Uh, say again. Seven deadly sins. Yes. No, we're still losing it. We really can't hear you. Um, um, yeah, so I think what you were saying was the seven definitely sins mocking as well as perhaps yeah. invoking fear. Is that sort of where you were going? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, we can hear you again now. Uh, having its cake and eating it because we've got we've got a parody of or a pastiche of a mor morality scene or morality structure. So it is. It is and is not serious. Mm because we've got a constant sort of oscillation with Faustus. Faustus keeps on thinking he can think his way out of it uh, and keeps on kind of running up against the brute reality. And uh, that sort of oscillation is at play in this scene, I think. Mm. Mm. Uh, any additional thoughts? Uh, Alexandra. Just very quickly adding to what Stephen just said, I also think that in the vein of uh, the best morality plays, um, this bit is probably intentionally made to be fun, to be enjoyable as an audience for that um, sort of empathy with the temptation side of things, for us, for us to like the idea and not feel that it's terribly terrible so that when later on it does turn out that hell is not a fun place, um, you know, we can have that, um, what's the word, that revelation, as with the morality plays. Mm. Excellent, let's move forward. I don't know whose cat it was, was uh, Keening. I'm hoping it's, it's, it's fine. Um, so... <laughs> he, he just has uh, strong opinions. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's always a... Back, 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 sleep driver. I can, um, I can shut him out if you'd rather not have the noise. That's fine. Um, okay, so we go into uh, next scenes. Uh, we have here. It's in our text as it's currently standing. It's uh, down as chorus, but this is also noted as uh, as being by Wagner as well. So uh, it's interesting to see: does this work better as a chorus, or does it work better as a character speech? I'm going to ask the chorus to read it. However, at this time. Learned Faustus to know the secrets of astronomy, graven in the book of Jove's high firmament, did might himself to scale Olympus' top, 
being seated in a chariot burning bright, drawn by the strength of Yoki dragons' necks. He now is gone to prove cosmography, and, as I guess, will first arrive at Rome to see the Pope and manner of his court, and take some part of Holy Peter's feast that to this day is highly solemnized. And exit. So it might be Wagner, or it might be the part was doubled. Um, thoughts uh, later on. Enter. Um, I'm, I don't know whether this is entering on a, on a dragon's neck here. You've probably dismounted, I would have thought. Uh, enter Faustus and Mephistopheles. Having now my good Mephistopheles passed with delight the stately town of Trier, environed round with airy mountaintops, with walls of flint and deep entrenched lakes, not to be won by any conquering prince. From Paris next, coasting the realm of France, we saw the river men fall into Rhine, whose banks are set with groves of fruitful vines. Then up to Naples, rich Campania, whose buildings fair and gorgeous to the eye, the streets straight forth and paved with finest brick, quarter the town in four equivalents. Then there saw we learned Marrow's golden tomb, the way he cut an English mile in length through a rock of stone in one night's space. From thence to Venice, Padua, and the rest, in one of which a sumptuous temple stands that threats the stars with her aspiring top. Thus hitherto hath Faustus spent his time. But tell me now, what resting place is this? Hast thou, as erst I did command, conducted me within the walls of Rome? Faustus I have, and, because we will not be unprovided, I have taken up his holiness of his privy chamber for our use. Ha! Huh, I hope his holiness will bid us welcome. Tis no matter, man. We will be bold with his good cheer. And now, oh my Faustus, that thou mayst perceive what Rome containeth to delight thee with. Know that this city stands upon seven hills that underprop the groundwork of the same. Just through the midst runs flowing Tiber's stream with winding banks that cut it in two parts, over the which four stately bridges lean that make safe passage to each part of Rome. Upon the bridge called Ponte Angelo, erected is a castle, passing strong, within whose walls such store of ordnance are, and double cannons framed of carved brass, as match the days within one complete yet. Besides the gates and high pyramids, which Julius Caesar brought from Africa. Now, by the kingdoms of infernal rule of Styx, Acheron, and the fiery lake of ever-burning Phlegethon, I swear that I do long to see the monuments and situation of bright splendid Rome. Come, therefore, let's away. Nay, Faustus, stay. I know you'd fain see the Pope and take some part of his holy Peter's feast. Where shalt thou see a troop of bald great friars whose summum bonum is in belly cheer. Well, I'm content to compass then some sport and by their folly make us merriment. Then charm me that I may be invisible to do what I please, unseen of any whilst I stay in Rome. So Faustus now, do what thou wilt, thou shalt not be discerned. Sounding of a senate, enter the Pope and the Cardinal of Lorraine to the banquet with friars. In fact, Obi-Wan seems to have entered the building uh, with friars attending. My Lord of Lorraine, will you pl will please you draw near? Fall to, the devil choke you and you spare. How now? Who's that which spake? Friars, look about. Is nobody if it like your holiness. My lord, here is a dainty dish was sent me from the Bishop of Milan. Oh, I thank you, sir. And Faustus snatches the dishes and all future such directions take as read. How now? Who's that which snatched the meat from me? Will no man look? My lord, this dish was sent me from the Cardinal of Florence. You say true. I'll have it. What? Again? My lord, I'll drink to your grace. I'll pledge your grace. My lord, it may be some ghost newly crept out of purgatory come to beg a pardon of your holiness. It may be so. 
Priors, prepare a dirge to lay the fury of this ghost. Once again, my lord, fall to. And the Pope crosses himself. What? Are you crossing of yourself? Well, use that trick no more, I would advise you. The Pope crosses himself again. Well, there's the second time. Beware the third. I give you fair warning. The Pope crosses himself again and Faustus hits him a box of the ear and they all run away. Come on, Mephistopheles, what shall we do? Nay, I know not. We shall be cursed with bell, book and candle. Ooh, bell, book, and candle. Candle, book, and bell. Forward and backwards to curse Faustus to hell. Anon you shall hear a hog grunt, a calf bleat, and an ass bray, because it is St. Peter's holiday. Re-enter all the friars to sing the dirge. Come, brethren, let's about our business with good devotion. And good luck. Uh, we'll say, uh, Stephen, you can be all the friars. Uh, you don't have to sing this, but uh, in general, you, I think you get the style. Cursed be he that stole away his holiness meat from the table. Maleticet Dominus. Cursed be he that struck his holiness a bow on the pace. Maleticet Dominus. Cursed be he that Took Friar Sandalo blow on the page, maledica dominus. Cursed be he that disturbeth our holy dirge, maledica dominus. Cursed be he that took away his holiness is wine, maledica dominus et omnis sancti. Amen. Mephistopheles and Faustus beat the friars and fling fireworks among them, and so exit. Um, yes, and you know, the second time I've got to go, considering what we were doing last week, it's so John Bale, this, uh, all of this stuff, actually, uh, it's so King John, um, you know, this, this merciless attacking on, on of the Pope, um, and, uh, using, using music in that way as well. Um, that's, uh, really, really interesting. I, I, I don't know if there's an actual connection, whether it's just coincidence because everybody was doing it. Um, thoughts about the, uh, the, uh, the exciting walking tours that Mephistopheles is, uh, currently running. Um, <laughs> uh, it's Sarah. Sarah, you're muted. No, I, I was just joking. I, sh I should have had an umbrella to hold over my head. <laughs> Yeah. It, it just confirms my view that all travel agents are actually demons. Yeah, I think it's plausible. I think that's plausible. We've um, had lawyers, travel agencies. Yeah, because it's a thing. It's again, it's the uh, the where where he's going, what's he's doing, what's going on. Um, you know, and we have this this fun scene of comedy, invisible mayhem. Um, uh, Stephen. Yeah, and, and just after we've had a whole bunch of mighty lines describing all these glories and wonders of the world as well. And, you know, so we're back to this old sort of, you know, Faustus is, is talking the talk. But when it comes to walking the walk, he's, he's basically kicking Bishop Brennan up the arse, isn't he? You know, there's a huge distance between the two. Um, which sometimes is, I mean, it's, it's sort of played for comedy here, but it's actually the whole play, isn't it? Mm. You know, it's, it's, a, it's a serious structural element as well. Mm. Okay. Um, so, um, any additional thoughts before we move forward? Eliza? Well, I, I well. love uh, the... the you know, just starting a food fight with the Pope is something that Marlowe, only Marlowe would do. But it's worth noting that the Pope isn't portrayed as particularly evil here. Uh, mm. uh, he, um, he's, he's luxurious, he's having a very nice dinner, uh, but, but, you know, he wants to be nice to ghosts rather than just exercise them. He wants to sing them to sleep sort of thing. Um, so that's an interesting thing. And again, there's more in the B text, which when we look at that, we can compare. Mm. Uh, other thoughts? Okay, uh, Stephen. Well, ju just to, just to to kind of follow on from Isa's point, Faustus's rhetoric is 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 unlimited, but his imagination is really really limited. Mm. But we never see him doing really bad things. Mm. Oh yeah, he's just sort of mucking about, isn't he? 
Um, you know, uh, I mean, we don't know what he's doing in between scenes. I mean, for for some of the things he got up to. Ho 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 ho! Yeah, Helen. Uh, the Cardinal of Lorraine, in English terms, was a bad man. He was Catholic League. You know, I mean, he was he was a very very much a hate figure. Okay, uh, right. We're going to move on, and now we're hitting the Dadaist element of this uh, uh, this uh, text because there's lots of things we're clearly in the wrong order. But it's fine. I'm I'm, I'm just going to keep going it with it this way because I, I find it fun. Uh, so this chorus is clearly misplaced, and then we're going to go into the scene that we would have had earlier. So uh, that's just to nicely confuse you all because I'm <laughs> I, I, I'm like that. Uh, so enter chorus. Uh, still muted. Sorry. When Faustus had with pleasure attained the view of rarest things and royal courts of kings, he stayed his course and so returned home. Where such as bear his absence but with grief, I mean his friends and nearest companions, did gratulate his safety with kind words, and in their conference of what befell, touching his journey through the world and air, they put forth questions of astrology, which Faustus answered with such learned skill as they admired and wondered at his wit. Now is his fame spread forth in every land. Amongst the rest, the emperor is one, Carolus V, at whose palace now Faustus is feasted amongst his noblemen. What there he did in trial of his art, I leave untold. Your eyes shall see it performed. Except you won't because we're going to have a scene now with Enter Robin the Ostler with a book in his hand. Oh, this is admirable. He has stolen one of Dr. Faustus's conjuring books, and I, uh, and in faith, I mean to search some circles for my own use. Now will I make all the maidens in our parish dance at my pleasure, stark naked, before me, and so by that means I shall see more than I have felt or saw yet. Oh, I apologise. I've given two people the same part, so uh, that that's a bit awkward. Um, uh, nobody, nobody flagged that one up earlier. Uh, properly speaking, Robin, I'm afraid should be uh, should be Stephen, and you should be Rafe. I'm afraid Tamara. I, ah. I apologise. Uh, that is my bad in the admin. Uh, I look at it now. I see two Robins, and there should only be one. Uh, so let's start that one again, because Robin is probably the same person from earlier, who was the clown. And now I've lost the script. So. <laughs> it's all very organised, ladies and gentlemen. It's all. It's all. It's all. This is. This has been carefully rehearsed. This is exactly how things work. Um. So yes. Yeah, so I this. Still uh, doing well. Yeah. This. This scene could be very much the scene that's living in the middle of uh, Faustus. He's still at home. Uh, conjuring demons, um, uh, reading books, and arguing with Mephistopheles. So, uh, enter Robin. Oh, this is admirable. Here, I have stolen one of Dr. Faustus' conjuring books. If I, I mean to search some circles for my own use. Now, will I make all the maidens in our parish dance at my pleasure? Stop naked before me. So by that means, I shall see more than e'er I felt or saw yet. Enter Rafe calling Robin. Robin, prithee, come away. There's a gentleman tarries to have his horse, and he would have his things rubbed and made clean. He keeps such a chafing with my mistress about it, and she has sent me to look, at, look thee out. Prithee, come away. Keep out! Keep out! As you blown up or, or you're dismembered Ralph keep out I am about a roaring piece of work come what dost thou with that same book thou canst not read yes my master and mistress shall find I can read he for his forehead and she for her private study she's born to bear with me or else my art fails why, Robin, what book is that? What book? Why, the most intolerable book for conjuring that was e'er invented by any Brimston devil. 
Canst thou conjure with it? I can do all these things easily with it. First, I can make thee drunk with Hippocrats at any tavern in Europe for nothing. <coughs> that's one of my conjuring works. Ah, uh, Master Parson says that's nothing. True, Ralph. And, um, poor Ralph, if thou hast any mind to Nan Spit, our kitchen maid, then uh, yeah, turn her and wind her to thy own use as often as thou wilt, and at midnight. Oh, brave Robin, shall I have none spit unto mine own use? On that condition I'll feed thy devil with horse bread as long as he lives, off free cost. No more, sweet Ralph. Let's go and make clean our boots which lie foul upon our hands, and then to conjuring in the devil's name. Muted. Ah, yes, so it's quite important. So that's one comic scene which probably lived much, much earlier. We now have second comedy scene with Robin and Rafe. So uh, on they come again. Come, Ralph. Did I not tell thee that we were forever made by this Dr. Faustus book? A.K. Signum. Here's a simple purchase for horsekeepers. Our horses shall eat no hay as long as this lasts. But, Robin, here comes a vintner. Hush! I'll gull him supernaturally. Enter vintner. Drawer, I hope all is paid. God be with you. Come, Ralph. Thanks, sir. I'm well with you. I must yet have a goblet pencil when you go. I a goblet? Ralph, <laughs> I a goblet? I scorn you. You are but a... <laughs> I a goblet! <laughs> Search me. I mean so, sir, with your favour. Search is Robin. I'll say you now. I must say somewhat to your fellow. You, sir. Me, sir. <laughs> Me, sir. Sir, do you feel? And Vintner searches him. Now, sir, you may be ashamed to burden honest men with a matter of truth. Well, tell of you have discovered it about you. You lie, drawer. It is a poor me. Sarah, you, I'll teach you to impeach honest men. Stand by. I'll scour you for a goblet. Stand aside, you had best. I charge you in the name of Belzebub. Look to the goblet, Ralph. What mean you, sir? I'll tell you what I mean. Danctobulorum periphrasticon. Yeah, I'll tickle you, Vintner. Look to the goblet, Ralph. Polypragmos, Belseberums, Pramanto, Pacostivus, Costumus, Prophecy, Popoli, Bossy, Bossy, Rassus, or Bossabus. Enter Mephistopheles, set squibs at their backs and then exit. They run about. Oh, Molly, 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 what meanest thou, Robin? Thou hast no goblet. Picatum, Picatorum. Here's thy goblet, good Vintner. There gives the goblet to Vintner, who exits. <laughs> Move misericordia pro nobis. What shall I do? Good devil, forgive me now. I'll never rob thy library more. Re-enter Mephistopheles. Monarch of hell, under whose black survey great potentates do near with awful fear, upon whose altars thousand souls do lie, how am I vexed with these villains' charms? From Constantinople I am hither come, only for pleasure of these damned slaves. Oh, from Constantinople. You've had a great journey. Will you take sixpence in your purse to pay for your supper and be gone? Uh, well, uh, sorry. Well, villains, for your presumption, I transform thee into an ape and thee into a dog. And so be gone. And exits. Oh, into an ape. That's brave. I'll have fine sport with the boys. I'll get nuts and apples, you know. 
And I must be a dog. Faith, thy head will never be out of the pottage pot. And so transformed into animals, they exit. We now re-enter where the chorus earlier had set us up. Uh, I love the fact that Mephistopheles is remarkably teed off. And, you know, I, was, I was on the other side of the world. Have you any idea how annoying it is to be brought round? Um, and so uh, we uh, say rejoin the, uh, the, the narrative of Faustus with enter Emperor Faustus and a knight with attendants. Master Dr. Faustus, I have heard strange report of thy knowledge in the black art, how that none in my empire nor in the whole world can compare with thee for the rare effects of magic. They say thou hast a familiar spirit, by whom thou canst accomplish what thou list. This therefore is my request, that thou let me see some proof of thy skill, that mine eyes may be witnesses to confirm what mine ears have heard reported. And here I swear to thee by the honor of mine imperial crown, that whatever thou doest, thou shalt in no way be prejudiced or damaged. To faith, he looks much like a conjurer. My gracious sovereign, though I must confess myself far inferior to the report men have published, and nothing answerable to the honor of your imperial majesty, yet for that love and duty binds me thereunto, I am content to do whatsoever your majesty shall command me. Then, Dr. Faustus, mark what I shall say. As I was a sometime solitary, set within my closet, sundry thoughts arose about the honor of mine ancestors, how they had won by prowess such exploits, got such riches, subdued so many kingdoms as we that do succeed, or they that shall hereafter possess our throne, shall, I fear me, ne'er attain to that degree of high renown and great authority, amongst which kings is Alexander the Great, chief spectacle of the world's preeminence, the bright shining of whose glorious acts lightens the world with his reflecting beams, as when I hear but motion made of him. Grieves my soul, I, I never saw the man. If therefore thou, by cunning of thine art, canst raise this man from hollow vaults below, where lies entombed this famous conqueror, and, and bring with him his beauteous paramour, both in their right shapes, gesture and attire, they used to wear during the time of their life. Thou shalt both satisfy my just desire and give me cause to praise thee whilst I live. My gracious Lord, I am ready to accomplish your request, so far as by art and power of my spirit I am able to perform. To faith, that's just nothing at all. But if it like your grace, it is not in my ability to present before your eyes the true substantial bodies of these two deceased princes, which long since are consumed to dust. I marry, Master Doctor. Now there's a sign of grace in you, when you will confess the truth. But such spirits as can lively resemble Alexander and his paramour shall appear before your grace in that manner that they both lived in, in their most flourishing estate, which I doubt not shall sufficiently content your imperial majesty. Go to, Master Doctor. Let me see them presently. Do you hear, Master Doctor? You bring Alexander and his paramour before the emperor? How then, sir? If faith, that's as true as Diana turned me to a stag. No, sir, but when Actaeon died, he left the horns for you. Mephistopheles, be gone. Exit Mephistopheles. Nay, and you go to conjuring. I'll be gone. Exit night. I'll meet with you anon for interrupting me so. Here they are, my gracious lord. Uh, Re-enter Mephistopheles with spirits in the shapes of Alexander and his paramour. M Master Doctor, I, I heard this lady, while she lived, had a wart or mole in her neck. How shall I know whether it be so or no? Your Highness may boldly go and see. Sure, these are no spirits, but the true substantial bodies of those two deceased princes. Exit the spirits. Will it please your highness now to send for the knight who, that was so pleasant with me here of late? One of you call him forth. And exit attendant, re-enter knight with a pair of horns on his head. How now, sir knight? Oh no, that's you, sir. I think it is me, yeah. How now, sir knight? What? I thought thou hadst been a bachelor, but now I see thou hast a wife that not only gives thee horns, but makes me wear them. <laughs> Feel on thy head. Thou damned wretch, inexorable dog, 
bred in the concave of some monstrous rock? How darest thou thus abuse a gentleman? Villain, I say, undo what thou hast done. Oh, not so fast, sir, there's no haste. But, good, are you remembered how you crossed me in my conference with the Emperor? I think I have met with you for it. Good, Master Doctor, at my entreaty, release him. <laughs> he hath done penance sufficient. My gracious Lord, not so much for the injury he offered me here in your presence as to delight you with some mirth, hath Faustus worthily requited this injurious knight. Which, being all I desire, I am content to release him of his horns, and, Sir Knight, hereafter, speak well of scholars. Mephistopheles, transform him straight. And Mephistopheles removes the horns. Now, my good lord, having done my duty, I humbly take my leave. Farewell, Master Doctor. Yet, ere you go, expect from me a bounteous reward. Exit, Emperor, Knight, Attendants, and that's as far as we're getting. It's interesting that this scene sort of ends and doesn't end because it just segues into the next scene with the Horse Corsa, which is where we're going to open next time. Um, it, it's really interesting, actually, having done Fry Bacon, Fry Bungie last week, how many little overlaps and conversations are going on there um, that are really much clearer now. The whole goblet business, that whole goblet turning books into uh, into goblets and then in this case sort of hiding the goblet and presumably passing the goblet around between them um comedy business there just feels very very similar in uh, theme and tone um you know it, it it's interesting sort of deliberately following the 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 the, the way the text has uh, has presented the scenes even though it's it's clearly wrong but having those two comedy scenes back to back and getting a sense that you know those characters are well, you know, consistent. They're a bit creepy um, at times. Um, both Robin and Rafe or Ralph, um, but also the Emperor. That whole thing about looking at the mole. Something really creepy about that, um, and it's the fact that you get that across across different levels and things. Um, so yeah, general thoughts, because uh, we are uh, well into extra time. I apologize, uh, I, I wanted to force the pace very much for this session uh, to pay off uh, for later on. Uh, so uh, very much final thoughts about the play so far, uh, individually or, or scenes and, and, and things. Uh, who wants to go first? We lost Helen. Uh, sadly, she had to go to Hull, so um, so we will um... to to Hull. Let's clarify Hull, Hull with Hull, a U, not Hell. Hull, um, and she did warn us in advance, so that's not a surprise. Uh, Alan, no, I was just thinking that there's the Dalesman left me Hull and Halifax and Hell. Mm. Good Lord, deliver us! <laughs> and it, this piece is is working quite nicely. I think there's a um, couple of things. Obviously, there's some reordering of scenes needed to try and make it make more sense um, and the other one that has struck me is there's a need to work out consistency on pronunciation V's and W's seem to be um, a problem and also the question of Ralph or Rafe which we would need to be determined in production mm. oh yes consistency regardless of whether it's right or wrong um yeah. if, uh, if it's consistent one way or the other it works yeah um okay other final thoughts tomorrow go, go, leap in leap in because i can see you're dying to say something i just i mm, i really want to do this as a zoom performance <laughs> I, I, for some reason, this play, especially the whole time we were reading it, I thought it lends itself so well to that, that medium. Um, and I'm, I'm just dying to, to do it. I'm, I'm not sure if I could direct it because I haven't directed anything in ages, but I'm just dying to give it a shot. Um, Alexander then do it, make it so. <laughs> as, as I'm quite bored today, then make, saying make it so seems very appropriate. Uh, number one <laughs> um that's that that was yes that was what i was dying to say um especially with the angels on on the shoulders we've talked about how it's almost overused these days but i think on zoom if you have faustus by himself and then two windows pop up 
and it's really clearly the angels giving him a talking to um just yeah i i just i i haven't come across a play um yet that we've been reading that lends itself so well to to just throwing it on uh zoom as a performance yeah the the angels is hacking into the session uh dan final thoughts this is a play that i've only seen and i've actually never read um so i've been sitting here just listening to everything and following both the a text and the b text at the same time um i'm very interested in how this this play seems to be a lot more a lot, have a lot more humor um scenes in the b text which of which are cut like the clown and wagner seat are just severely shortened just how that play how it's not the play that i guess as as, as familiar with I'm, I'm not as familiar with this version of it as I am probably with a mixed version of it or the one that's staged. So I'm interested to see where this goes. Um, I do like the idea of um, Wagner being that, reading that part as opposed to the chorus, because I think that just fits in more with the tone of this play in that one scene that we we're talking about. But um, wait, wait for more comments tomorrow. Okay, lovely. Um, uh, Pamela, final thoughts? <laughs> Sorry, I was just reading the comments. <laughs> yeah, I've I've really enjoyed it. I kind of also like Dan. I've seen productions, but I've never really studied it, so I wasn't expecting so much from it. Um, I also it makes me want to go back because last week I only caught the end of Fire Bacon, and if you're saying there's so many crossovers and so many things that um, are coming up again, I feel like I need to go back and actually read that properly and try and kind of find more joy in that because I've enjoyed this so much and I didn't like that so I want to give it more of a chance. Mm. Uh, Elizabeth, final thought? Um, I really enjoyed really enjoy the play. I think it's quite compelling. I think Francis is drawn quite exquisitely. Um, I really enjoyed him as a character and I think that he drives the plot really well. Mm -hmm. uh, Vicky, final thought? I have to confess, I have never seen this play performed and I have never read it. This is brand new to me. I'm not sure how I've managed to get this far in life and not have actually done anything with this before. It's fab. I really, I think they're beautiful characters. They're very well drawn and I just, I want to know what happens and I'm not here tomorrow, so I'm going to sit and read the rest of it now. Well, the advantage with this play is you can always go and watch. There are uh, commercially available versions of the play available. Um, uh, for you know, there's the Globe. There's uh, another one uh, uh, digitally. I think there's a couple of audio versions out there. There are lots of Faustuses about uh, to some degree. We don't need actually. Just show of hands. Who here has either seen, been in, or generally involved in a production of Faustus at some point in their life? So, uh, uh, so, so, uh, about 70%. Um, so, uh, yes, which is in that sense, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, yeah, it's a known thing, uh, to a much greater degree than many of the other plays we do. Uh, Liza, final thought. Well, um, I, I've been looking, uh, for, for things on the trail of that question that I was, uh, that I, I posed earlier. Um, and I guess we, you know, uh, I'll, I'll follow up on that tomorrow. What I'm noticing here is that it is that it's sort of a constant degeneration that Faustus begins the first act purely devoted to things of the mind, but frustrated that he can't find a single purpose that satisfies him. Um, and from the moment he swears the oath, he fall, he, well, he changes at least more and more into comedy. Uh, uh, you know, starting a food fight with the Pope is, is great fun, but, but would it have satisfied him in the way that divinity or medicine or philosophy did not? Um, and I think later, a couple hundred years later, Goethe does a much better job of answering that question. Uh, and I know that's not what we're here to talk about, but there are interesting contrasts between between the two versions. This one is very much a, I'm seeing anyway, a downward slope with occasional little um, divots in it. It's interesting, Mephistopheles just 
constantly undermines the deal. Uh, but within the letter of the law, which is what demons, good demons do, uh, you know, it's this, this constant, you, you, he wants knowledge, he gives him knowledge in, in a way that's deeply not what he wanted. Uh, and every time he, he wants something, he's given something slightly worse than he'd hoped for. And, and it, that just seems to drag him down to, well, none of these things are actually great. Let's just go into railing, it'll be fine. Um, and, and yeah, it's sort of this, this staggered loss of expectation, which is very difficult to dramatize. I think that's basically the fundamental problem with any version of this story is that actually once he's signed his soul away, it's very, very difficult to depict the, uh, the what happens next and how you close I it. I think it's, it may partly be to do with what Marlowe thought his audience would want to see. The, the mm. spectacle, tableaus, popes being stupid. Mm. Well, it's also the question of what's happening with this text over time as well, because um, there's, there's all sorts of uh, questions about what has happened to this text. We are reading for, for that sake. Text A. So, um, you know, this is, this is a text that under, uh, clearly undergoes uh, uh, adaption. Uh, Sarah, final thoughts? You're slightly, you've slightly oh, uh, moved that. up. Uh, yeah. You can recenter yourself. There we are. Um, yeah, I love this play. I did it at uni. Um, I've only seen it once, a really bad production of it that was very disappointing. Um, but I, I have we've also- We've all got a bad Faustus somewhere. We've all got a bad, we've all had a bad, bad Faustus experience. Um, I did. All, I have also uh, directed a reading of it um, that was um, in the cellar of a bar um, called Under Hell. So that was like quite appropriate. That was why we did it. In fact, no one was there to do it. They were there. They'd come up to Yorkshire to do a costume fit, and um, one of the local bar owners that I knew had a, he just opened up his cellar as a new extra bar and it was called Under Hell so we were like oh let's do a play reading down there and let's do Faustus so um I do have lots of ideas about this um but I'm not even going to start with them now because like I'll just be here all day but um I do love it and I'm really I'm really enjoying reading it and I love the way everyone's reading it as well it's just been great to much better than the staged version that I saw at the Greenwich Playhouse god knows when with yeah. uh, video, a film, uh, if it's the same version, uh, the, the digital version is available. Uh, Stephen, uh, yeah, I've seen it and it's it's not good. Um, well, like like lots of people, really, I'm, I've I've spent a lot of time with this texture. I taught it for twenty five years at university, so I have lots to say. But um, one thing that hasn't come up yet, but which I think might get more interesting, is we've been speaking about the kind of oscillation, perhaps, between the serious aka tragic and, and the comic scenes but there's another layer which is where we situate the chorus because the chorus is very very judgmental and very censorious and um, if there is such a term as religiously correct uh, quite unbending and I think one of the things that is interesting about the play is it has uh, this third voice which is effectively the voice of um, uh, of Orthodox Christianity, which is, you know, don't try this at home, kids. Regard is hellish fall. It's a really, really simple story. Just say no. And everything about the play complicates that. Um, so I, I guess that's something maybe to, to look out for as we, as we encounter the chorus, because it's easy to, easy to kind of, oh yeah, of course, just telling you what's going on. But there are all these value judgments planted in there, which make it as a sort of intellectual history thing. Very interesting to me. Mm. Uh, Leaky, final thought. Um, like Vicky, I hadn't read or seen the play. I've studied a couple of scenes from it uh, and a couple of speeches, but that's it. And I love it. I love it. I love it. The language is so gorgeous. You can just, it's so chewy, but also there's so much room for business. I want to do it. Um, I'd love to do it as a Zoom performance. I, I, I love that inspiration. But also there's so much business. There's so much to be done with bodies and props on stages. And mwah! <laughs> uh, Alexandra, as our, um, uh, our guest today, as it were, uh, any final thoughts? Um... Oh, it's been brilliant. I've loved it. Um, I just, I really love this play. Um, I agree with you, Robert, that there's something very um, 
difficult in in staging with um, this sort of I don't know mid section maybe or or front mid quarter um, where he signed away his his um, soul and then he goes off to gain all these wonderful things and actually what we see him do is petty and um, kind of like a waste of the powers that that he's aimed for um, and how do we how do we do how do we stage that in a way that makes it engaging and, and valuable um, you know for interesting for an audience to watch uh, but I also think there are there are so many other things in the staging of this play that are so fascinating and uh, and draw us in draw me in as a as an audience member um, that you know, how, however many times I see it, it's not enough. Um, you know, there have been, as you say, there there have been more productions of this than uh, many, many other plays by uh, anybody except he who must not be named. Um, but yeah, I, I think there's something really, maybe not innovative in the context of the time, but perhaps there's a lot of innovation that we see looking back uh, because we don't, most of us as audiences don't have contact with a lot of the other works, um, and yeah, in, innovation and also daring. That was something that we were mentioning in the comments. Um, he's a very daring author, you know, Marlo, um, in in what he brings on stage and who he makes fun of as real people. In you know the the outright um, heresies or or kind of that way religiously problematic things that he allowed that he brings onto the stage and i just love that i just love that so much well uh i i, I think we can almost uh, uh i think there's one of the things you need to sort of get across or i think in my mind anyway with mephistopheles and you know and this 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 uh, frustration that faustus has in terms of doing anything uh good is that mephistopheles sort of needs to be an ambition blocker you need to see him actively reducing the scope of Faustus's ambition. Uh, I, I don't know if that's me overreaching, uh, but overreaching is sort of what Marlowe's for, isn't it? Um, and, um, and, uh, and, and things. Uh, it's been a, a good, uh, if swift, session, um, uh, even though we're slightly over time, um, but we've done quite a lot. There isn't much more of the play to do, and then we're gonna stagger straight into with purpose and intent, um, the Merry Devil of Edmonton, of which similarities may also be found. So that's going to be next session. I'd like to thank all the readers today for all their hard work. Thank you very much and goodbye. Bye. Bye.